Hi writers, welcome to this video on MLA citing, specifically for the short story essay number one. This video is useful whether or not you're in the same sequence, and so if you're watching it and it's an old video, it is still a goodie, I promise. Um, so there's a couple things we're going to do in this particular essay, What we're um, in this particular essay video. <laughs> And what we're going to do is we are going to look at and sample essay so we can understand MLA formatting. We're also going to look at the two elements of MLA formatting and citing, which is in-text citations and then the work cited page. MLA citing is can be stressful and filled with anxiety for you if you're trying to remember all the formatting rules. Uh, you don't have to. We have handbooks and we have online resources. And so you no longer have to memorize information. You can look it up. And so that's what this video is about, um, using resources to help you feel more confident with MLA citing. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to draw your attention to is a sample essay. If I haven't given you a sample essay, please request one. It is by far the best way for you to understand what it is I'm looking for and to see how MLA citing and formatting works. Again, no need to memorize any of this information if you have a handbook or if you use Owl Purdue, the website, um, or many other MLA websites, you can find the information that you need. Let me go ahead and open this up for us. And so uh, we'll start with the formatting. So here is how MLA is formatted. Your name, my name, level of English or course and then the date with the day first, title of your essay, which is intriguing and draws your reader in, the header, which you can find out how to put on your document if you just YouTube it. There's lots of videos for all this kind of stuff. Um, and so there are one inch margins on the side here, an indentation for the first paragraph, and this question, drawing your reader in, that's, that's how Marian did it. Um, again, that is the formatting as you keep going through, you'll see where the in-text citation is. That's where you have your quote embedded in your paper in a parenthetical citation at the end with the author's last name and the page number, and then a response or an analysis to the quote. That's anchoring the quote in the essay. So again, these are all skills that you may not have perfected, and it's okay. The purpose of taking a class is to practice these skills and to gain confidence and to get better at it. Those two things are linked. Your ability to believe in yourself to do it and having successful experiences doing it and getting um, knowing that you can do it because you've done it before, being able to have that neurological pathway that says, I've done this, I've succeeded at this, and being able to go back to that um, memory or that experience with confidence and re reinforcing it every time you succeed at it. Um, so again, that's in-text citing. That's every time you cite a quote from any of your sources, you will have the actual parenthetical citation, quotation marks around your quote and the parenthetical citation. The last part for MLA citing, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the page, is the actual citing from the source. For many of the short stories we're using, they are coming from a reader. It's a series of readers called The Little Seagull Reader. It's third edition, edited by Joseph Kelly from Norton Publisher in 2015, and the page number. So this is cited as a work in an anthology. I'm going to go over to um, the other part of our resources. On the home page, you have writer resources, and this is a list I've been compiling for quite some time. It'll get cleaner as I as I um, use it more in classes. This is the first time I've offered it um, in 2020 during the summer. So if you're watching this after 2020, it's going to look different. What do you need? And so these are resources that I have found to be the most common ones I cite for or I give to students when they're working on their writing. You can play with those and hop on them and just see what's on there based on your need. But there's a few specifically dedicated to MLA citing. MLA Generator with EasyBib, for those of you that like that. I will produce sample essay in MLA format is awesome for really looking at how MLA citing and research works. Um, work cited page formatting and basics. In-text citations of quotes in MLA format. And then um, I will produce research and MLA citation. 
So when you click on it, it's not as easy as like you click on it and all the answers are there. You still have to use your sleuth detective skills to find what you need. And that can be frustrating. So take a breath and just be patient with yourself because MLA is an entire style guide. It's um, something that takes, it can take semesters, years, a lifetime to really understand. And that's okay because that's what we're here for. Um, we have overview and introduction and you can click on the different components if you're looking for, depending on what you're looking for. When you click on one, it'll give you more information. So um, whether it's formatting or putting the header on there or whatever, it's going to tell you what it should look like. So once you actually click on um, the guidelines, all this information here on the left tab, on the left side will pop up. So again, look at all this stuff. This is a lot of stuff. So if you're citing a book, it looks one way. If you're citing a periodical, it looks one way. If you're citing an electronic source like a website um, or a video online, it looks another way. So again, every type of source is cited in its own unique way, and that complicates um, and muddles up MLA citing for us. You do not have to memorize any of this stuff. Um, just for reference, your many of the readings are coming from that anthology, and so you're going to be citing basically a book. Um, and so there's, again, lots of different ways to cite a book. A book by one author, a book by two authors, a book in a series, a book by an organization, a book with no author. What? A book with no author, right? Um, but that's just common now to not have authors on websites and other things that we find. So there's different editions. I'm just scrolling down because I was looking for anthology. So again, this is how the sample essay by Miriam, she cites a, a work in an anthology. Um, this is an anthology itself, and then this is just a story from the anthology. With um, most citing websites, they'll show you what it's supposed to look like. They'll give you the, um, the template, and then you can just fill that in. And so this is an example author title of the actual thing or piece that was that you're citing within the anthology, the title of the anthology itself, um, the publisher year and the pages at a time because you're just using that chunk, right? Whenever you have a work um, that has multiple readings or stories or sources in it, then they're cited as works in an anthology. I hope this helps. Um, again, be patient with yourself and remember that it takes time. Use sample essays, use your sleuth skills, go onto YouTube and type in MLA citing or work cited. If you like videos, basically when you're learning about MLA citing, what you're really learning is how to do research and how to figure things out, how to problem solve, how to go where you need to go to get the resources that you need to get. And that part of your learning is just as important, if not more important in the long run for you in terms of soft skills as actually learning how to do MLA citing. Um, again, have fun with it. You learn something new every day. I know I do. Um, and I really hope this video helps to build your confidence and um, strengthen your skills.